And this is the guy that everybody has been excited about and waiting for. This is the Transformers Power of the Primes Leader Class Evolution Rodimus Prime. And this really isn't a good toy at all. This is pretty awful. But that's not the whole story. In fact, it's far from it. This is one that <clears throat> I wasn't sure I was going to get. Wasn't sure if I was going to keep. Had no intentions really on doing so. But the more that I kind of dug through the layers, I think that I have found things about this guy that I actually really like. And granted, in a couple of areas, I did add a couple of custom paint apps to kind of help my appeal to, for this guy along just a little bit. I know, I know, all of that sounds kind of complicated. Stick around because we're going to cover everything to do with this guy in the latest Got Back True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and as always, uh, I am your host, Dennis Moulton, aka Gotbot. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, let the world know about me. Uh, spend some time on the channel, see what it is that tickles your fancy. Check out Machinery of Man, the Everything Factor, and me everywhere, and this is Rodimus Prime. Or so we are told. Um, I'm going to take him out of it. Let's look at the box here first. Uh, naturally, it's a box. This is nice Rodimus Prime art. Uh, I assume over on the side is supposed to be Hot Rod. Uh, I really don't find a huge difference between both of them by rights. Um, okay, uh, you know, I, again, if we were to look at the other side, we have the 12 symbols of the Primes. Uh, this is the back. We have all of the artwork we have Vector and Micronus and Liege Maximo there again. Uh, it talks up here about the evolution just as it did for Optimus. With Optimuses, it said something along the lines of, you know, the humble Orion Pax you know, harnesses the power of the Primes to become the, I don't know, mighty Optimus Prime, whatever it was. And this one is the, I think, like the brash Hot Rod, Autobot Hot Rod, you know, becomes the courageous Rodimus Prime. Um, it's a box. It is what it is. We're going to look at, you know, the uh, collector card and the accessories. We're going to do all that stuff next, and then we're going to pop right into the figure. And here is the ever-popular collector card. Beautiful artwork on the front of game. We have a little symbol up in the corner. I don't particularly care about getting all 12 of these. There's one for each prime. Uh, this one is Rodimus Alchemist, and uh, it, Alchemist Prime gives him the power to overheat the, I don't know, cores of other robots. Uh, I guess that's kind of a cool one. Some of these are questionable. Some of them are pretty cool. That one, that one is pretty good. Uh, but let's move away from this and get into his accessories next. And this is one of the accessories. It is uh, Rodimus's Matrix of Leadership. I guess I should turn it around this way since that's the proper way. Um, it is exactly like Optimus's, except the gray chamber that holds it is now yellow. The heavily painted orange on the other one is now um, silver, and we still have the same blue. Again, this is like a, a you know, it, it, it has a little thingy up here so that it's like a a titan master prime master and of course just like with optimus you can push this out and have just the little chamber thing left and you can take again i'm going to put my cronus in here interesting try as i may try as i might i cannot get my cronus to fit in here at all um, these are supposed to fit in here. This is not working. I don't know if other ones will. I assume they will, but I guess it's sort of like when the faces are a bit big on some of the Titan Masters. Some of them fit better than others. Um, so strike against them right there. I, I'm sure that there's a way to get them in. I'm sure other people have had success, but on mine, I cannot. 
at all get this in. Let's move on to his other accessory, shall we? And his other accessory is this rather large harpoon gun. I don't, I don't know what this is. I don't really like it. It's a weird blaster. It's all cast in black, which is fine, but it's certainly not iconic like Optimus Prime's. Again, just like his, this splits in two. And I assume that either of these or both of these can be wielded by Hot Rod. I guess that's the intention. Um, and of course, they go back together to give you this again. Uh, it's not great, but whatever. Uh, you know, it is big. I'll give it that. That's kind of cool, but it, uh, I don't know. It just, I feel like for a prime, it should look more powerful, I suppose. Anyway, moving on to the core figure itself. And here we have the and here we have the very long-awaited overdue update to Rodimus Prime. Now, uh, in the past, we've gotten a couple of hot rods. We're going to see them in a little bit. But we've never really gotten a proper Rodimus Prime. Perhaps the closest was uh, one that came out during the hmm, Titanium series, was it? Was that it? Is that what it was called? And that never got a very good reaction. And sadly, I don't think this guy is once too many people get him in hand. But I'm going to kind of show you at least the way that I enjoy the guy, and maybe you will too. In looking at him, it's all right. It is definitely a very highly, highly stylized look for Rodimus Prime. There is absolutely... No doubting that. It's not the G1 version that we know and love. High shoulders. The high shoulders are really more reminiscent of Hot Rod. We have light red hair and on the head and kind of coming down around the front. And then we have these maroon colored arms and uh, like pelvis area. It's a mishmash of colors. I get why they did it because Hot Rod is supposed to be a lighter red and Rodimus is supposed to be more of a maroon. So they looked at it and said, well, we'll make Hot Rod red and then we'll at least kind of set it up so that when he evolves into Rodimus Prime, uh, we can give some symmetry so that though there's a color mis mismatch, it's symmetrical on this side and the other. I still don't like it. It all should have been maroon in my opinion. The other thing that I, I really really don't like about this is when we turn him to the side this thing he has an enormous enormous backpack um, in fact without it he would probably be a pretty good robot and a decent figure but it's that's awful that is I'm sorry that's just absolutely mind-bogglingly awful. Okay, let's try and salvage this though, because here's the thing. A lot of the colors are here for Rodimus. You're not mistaking who this is. It's Rodimus Prime. We all know it. And the hot rod colors, they're pretty good. His vehicle mode is where he shines, even though his trailer does not match his cab, car, thing, it's a mismatch there. Because the mis mismatch drives me nuts, I gotta score down the colors. But it's largely accurate. I did add a couple of apps. In Rodimus Prime mode, I don't feel like his lower legs should be completely black. I feel like a, like a gunmetal gray would have been a better choice. And we're missing yellow right here on this section even though we do have the orange and thankfully we do have his fists the correct color. Hot Rod is mostly accurate. Uh, the couple of custom apps that I talked about there were added to his hands. So overall I'm giving his paint about a about a seven and a half. There's a mismatch and I had to add some apps. Um, and there's still a couple of things that I, I just don't like, like the black here and the black on a hot rod for that matter. Um, so yeah, about a seven and a half. Some people might look at it and not even notice the mismatch. I've encountered that with other fans that I know that have been looking at them and said, I never would have noticed that. 
Um, maybe it doesn't matter to some people, and you know what? That's cool. I can only I can only speak for my views and opinions on the figure, and I got to score that at a seven and a half. Okay, what about uh, the articulation? Well, before we get into that, let's let's look at incorporating his accessories. The first is the Matrix. And I think that this is a kind of ingenious. You open up the whole kind of front section of his body and his matrix chamber is in right here. And is it this way that it goes in or is it the other way? I can't remember if it goes in. No, it goes in this way. So in this case, with Optimus, you need to have the little square section facing up. With Rodimus, you need to have it facing down. So you put that in there, and then you bring this whole section back down, and now he has the matrix inside of his chest. Uh, in terms of his uh, blaster, well, you know, I mean, that can go in his hand, no problem. He cannot dual wield it, really. Um, you might be able to kind of finagle something, but he can't really dual wield it. I don't even think he's particularly supposed to. Um, it does like to come apart. It's not the most secure of connections that holds this thing together, but uh, again, maybe that's just my version of the mold, so I won't really hold that against them. Uh, articulation. Again, much like we did with Optimus, I'm going to do the articulation here, and I'll give the score when we look at the Hot Rod Robot mode. So, here we have a head that can go left and right. It can only go this far and this far. It can't go all the way around because it just doesn't have the clearance. The arms, they can go, assuming you can avoid his crest on the back, they can go all the way around. Uh, we have a bit of a, a bit of a butterfly joint up here. It's really Hot Rod's leg, but a bit of a butterfly joint. Uh, as you move the arm around, you might move this thigh piece. In terms of shoulders, it's his leg. Um, and that one's not gonna move up now because I did move his thigh piece. There. Um, you know, you can move his shoulders out about that far because of the thighs, but I think that looks just awful with these orange pieces in here, and that's assuming you have the thigh in the right orientation. You saw that I had to fix it. We have a bicep swivel, which is nice. We have an elbow to 90 degrees. We have wrist rotation. Um, we do not have a waist. That's, that's too bad. Um, it would have been nice if we did have a waist. In terms of the legs, uh, <clears throat> Well, the hip skirt here is one piece, it moves out so the legs can go out that far. Um, the knee can bend like that. I don't know if that's good articulation to you. Um, I don't like when his knees bend forward. The leg can only go back that far because it hits the backpack. We have 90 degrees at the knee, so that's good. We have out that far, basically. Um, and we do have, much like we did with Optimus, we do have pretty respectable uh, ankle tilts. And you know what? I'll give credit where credit is due with the ankle tilts. I mean, they're great, and you can get some dynamic poses with them. The legs are hindered. Uh, lack of a waist is pretty bad, but you can still score some dynamic poses with them. And he stands well. Now, out of package, I will mention this. At least on mine, these pieces were in his foot, so he didn't have his heel uh, out. And when I stood him up, I, like he still stood fine, no problem. But he does have extra heel support, which is nice. I give credit where credit is due there as well. The articulation is all right. I mean, it's not... It is not stellar. You know, if you have his arm up like this, like it can't go out to the side this way. You know, it, it just, it can't. You'll break the leg out of hot rod. The only way it's going out to the side is, and again, I got that thigh moved again. 
The only way it's going out to the side is this way, and that's only if you have the, the thigh of hot rod done correctly, basically. And that's a bit of a shame. Um, and of course the backpack hinders the legs. Is, I, oh, oh. Okay, we're not going to really get into transformation, so to speak, but let's kind of de-evolve this guy so we can take a look at hot rod and give a score for the articulation. So what do we do in order to accomplish that? Well, we need to first remove these arms. Now these arms are held on, first it takes a lot to get them on once they're off uh, because you have these two tabs that push off and then another one that wraps around another piece. I don't know if any of that plastic is going to break. I don't, I'm not the most confident in it. And according to the instructions, you just pull this down. So I'm going to try and get this off now. Uh, <laughs> you may see me struggle a bit, but we will see. I got that one off to my shock and amazement. Uh, when I get the other one off, I'll show you the way the connection kind and of And here we have armless Rodimus Prime. Okay, so a couple things. The easiest way to get these arms off is not to pull them straight down. The easiest way to get them off is to have them a, a firm grasp of this and kind of angle it out. I find that that is going to get them off the best, but that being said, it is still not easy and requires quite a lot of force. Inside the arm, and I'm going to, actually I'm going to try and, I'm going to try and bring this in close. But before I do that, I'm just going to point out what this attaches to here. So right here we have uh, two little starts here, two little starts here, and then there's a little piece around the back right here. So that's what it is that you're trying to attach to. The pieces you have, well, are this. You have a little start here and a little start here. And this piece down here wraps around another piece. Pushing these two up isn't too bad, but the problem is this is hard to get around. Or if you get this around, then these become hard to push up. It is a very odd connection. I almost wonder why they didn't just use, you know, like combiner wars type of connections. It would have been way, way smoother. This is solid once it's in there, but it's not fun to get on or to get off. So now that we have armless hot rod here, what do we do? Well, we take the two, or sorry, armless Rodimus Prime, we take the two arms, this parts for me bit, and we lay to the side. That is very much like some third party add-ons for the old classics mold. Um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, then we open this section up, and if you look in right here, you see that there's a little connection in there. You basically need to get Rodimus or Hot Rod off of that Rodimus connection there. And you pull it off. Once you pull it off, I just pulled off, I just pulled off a heel spur in the process. Look at that. I just popped it off. It's nothing to pop it back on, but I guess the force required popped it clean off. Um, now we're left with this whole body cavity piece that has the matrix in it. This will become his trailer along with the arms. We're going to lay this aside for now and deal with Hot Rod. So now we have Hot Rod looking like this. What do we do to kind of make him into something more recognizable? Well, we're going to go to the robot mode first. Uh, the vehicle mode will be our last thing. So, to begin here, we want to turn the backpack around and we'll just straighten that out for now. That's all going to go moved again. Don't worry about it right now. We take the leg and bring it down and the leg and bring it down. We take the body here and flip it all the way up. So it was down here. We flip it all the way up and the Rodimus head will hide in the chest cavity. So we flip that all the way up. We bring the leg down, we bring the leg down. We turn this around and we turn this around. We open up the shin, we bring out the foot, open up the shin, bring out the foot, close both of that up. 
And there's his lower body done. Let's reposition things and finish this guy. I wanted something nice and stable for him to make life a little easier on us all. We bring down his arm all the way and we bring down his arm all the way. Now, <laughs> again, this is one of those sections that is a little bit fiddly and challenging. All you really have to do is untab the shoulders from the centerpiece, but that's not easy to do in my experience. Really, if you're lucky enough to get one off, then you're going to do just fine, but you got to get one off. Whew. Okay, so I finally got one off, and here's why it's challenging, because you have a little red tab up here, and you have a little orange tab, his arm's kind of in the way of seeing it, a little orange tab right there, and this arm tabs in over both of them, like when you push the shoulder up, it tabs over both of them, it's, I've seen a lot of people transform this guy going from vehicle uh, to robot, because that is so much uh, easier, going from uh, robot to vehicle is harder. Like I said, that's a challenge, but now that we got one out, usually, if we have one out, the other one isn't nearly as bad. And of course, because this is on camera, naturally, the other one would be just as bad. <sighs> then we finally fold down the front here. When we fold down the front, we can take this whole piece and wiggle it up on a pin there's a large pin in there, swivel it around for his head, push it back down, push the body back up. Once you get the body back up, you can take this piece and push it in. Bring the shoulders down a bit, and boom, in the end, there you go, hot rod. Now, that being said, the whole point of these evolutions, they're to have a deluxe class, uh, you know, figure inside, and a Voyager class uh, figure, um, you know, when it's kind of all said and done. Um, no, that's wrong. The whole point of these evolution toys is to have a deluxe class figure that's small. It powers up to become a leader class figure. That being said, I don't think that this is quite a deluxe. Let's, let's do a little comparative analysis here. In uh, leader mode, when he is the large one, the, the big Rodimus Prime, he's about the same size as Optimus. Now, there is Optimus next to him. Well, there's most of Optimus next to him. We don't need all of Optimus in there. We all know how, roughly how big a leader class figure is, I think, I hope. But you can see he comes up a nice a distance on Optimus, pretty much to the bottom of his chest. Um, using a leader class figure that's more familiar to us, you know, here he is with Overlord. You know, again, well, again, most of Overlord. Same sort of thing. He comes up to the, about the bottom of Overlord's chest. He, so that tells us that he's a bit bigger than a Deluxe because typically a Deluxe would only come up maybe to the abdomen. Well, you know what? Let's, let's kind of compare this a little bit more, shall we? Here he is with the Classics Deluxe class. Hot Rod. Significant difference, but to be fair, this was a small deluxe to begin with. Well, how about something more recent? How about the Titans Return Hot Rod? This was a, a fair-sized deluxe. Um, when I did his review, oh, about 11 months ago, I said that he could scale well with my version of Galvatron, which is the uh, third-party Unique Toys Mania King. And he does scale decently well with it, but I think that this new one will scale a little bit better. Taking him out of it. Uh, here he is with another Deluxe, one, a mold that a lot of people know. This is, this is Metal Hawk, but it is that trigger-happy mold. A lot of people know 
what Trigger Happy was like because he was a fantastic figure this past year and a fan favorite by many. This is the exact same mold. This guy is bigger. So all of those comparisons, and I'm not usually a huge comparison guy, but I thought that they were fitting. Here's the one, at least for me on my shelf, that counts. How does he compare to this guy? I'm sorry, I wish that I could do a proper comparison with the Titans Return Voyager Galvatron, but I don't have that figure. Never did take a look at it either. Um, but I think that this is pretty close, pretty decent, to be honest with you. Galvatron a little bit bigger, but mass-wise, I think they're pretty good. I think that they can look well together. So I would venture to say to you that this guy is actually a small Voyager, maybe about the size of Roadbuster, or a large Deluxe. I, I would venture to say to you he is probably bigger than the Classics Universe, like Sunstreak or Sideswipe uh, Red Alert mold. And that's a pretty big deluxe right there. Okay, so now that we've established that I like his size, and here's the thing. As soon as this guy was announced as a leader class figure, I said, oh, why can't we just get a proper Voyager class Rodimus Prime? Is that really so hard to ask for? Maybe we have kind of gotten it. Because here's the thing. With the shoulders being lower, I kind of feel like this guy, the Titan's Return Hot Rod, is a pretty great hot rod. It has the big shoulders and whatnot. It, it puts me in the mind of Hot Rod, but I feel like this puts me more in the mind of Rodimus Prime, even though the color is brighter than I would like. Perhaps for me, it's not a matter of adding the trailer to him. Perhaps for me, it's a matter of just being able to use this guy. We're going to talk about that a little bit more as we go. So, pay depths, I already said, seven and a half. Articulation, well, we're actually going to kind of compare the articulation between these two. This guy has a head that can go left and right. It does get hindered by the collar. It can go a long way, but it can't go all the way around. This guy can go all the way around. Uh, the arms, they can go all the way around, so can his. The elbows can bend way up because of this transformation hinge, he really has a double elbow. This guy can go to about 90 degrees. Uh, neither of them really have anything at the wrist. Now you'll notice down here I added a little bit of yellow and I colored the fists the proper color just like I did with this guy. Added some yellow and colored the fists. I might have added that orange too. Um, the waist. The Titans Return one has a waist. The new one does not have a waist, unfortunately. Um, the legs on the new one can go forward about that far. They can kick all the way forward on the Titans Return one. His knee can also do that again. I don't like that. Not at all. It really... That really bothers me actually. We have legs that can only go back that far because of this again Huge, obnoxious backpack. It's too bad this piece couldn't fold up or some such. We don't have a thigh swivel, but we do have a kind of at the knee swivel. So that, that works just like it does on this guy. Uh, and we have a little under 90 degrees at the knee. So does this guy have a little under 90 degrees. The toes can tilt, the heel can tilt forward and back. So can this guy. The fact is, Oh, and this guy's arms can go out to here, about the same as the Titans Return one. Um, and because of a ball joint, there is a swivel. All in all, I would say the Titans Return one manages to just eke out a victory in the articulation department. 
this guy is all right. His big version is all right. They can do a lot. You can get certain dynamic poses, but there are limitations that might drive you a little nuts at times. As such, I'm going to give the articulation an overall score of seven. Right now, this guy is scoring a 7.25. So now that we've established his score, let's move on to the transformation. I'm going to show him as Hot Rod first in that configuration, and then we'll look at him as Rodimus. And this part of the transformation is not that bad. Little couple of odd choices, but not bad. Uh, okay, so we straighten out the arms if that's not already done. Um, you pull down the chest, lift up the head. Again, it's on a rather large pin there, turn it, bring it down, and bring this up. Take this off, and just kind of leave it free flowing for now. Uh, in terms of the feet, we open up the shins, we fold the foot in. We open up the shin, and again, we fold the foot in. So far, so good. Uh, bring down the waist skirt if you didn't already do that. Take the entire backpack piece and turn it around. And now we just need to deal with the arms and the legs. Okay, so the arms are easy. We bring those up and we tab them in and we bring those up and we tab it in on the sides like that there's the kind of top of the car front of the car front end of the car done then we bring this piece down now when you bring this down you have see if i can explain this you have this almost little t piece here in the center there's a little uh, rectangular ta uh, slot on the side of the leg that's going to go in over that. And then you push the leg up and there's another little rectangular tab here that goes down into this opening rectangular slot on the tampograph sticker, whatever that is. I th it might be a tamp... No, that's a sticker, I think. Uh, actually, I think it's a sticker on over paint. It's, which means when you bring this down, you almost have to... Turn the leg to the side to get it in that little section and then bring it up. Once you have them in, it should look like this. There's no gappage of any kind there. It's just all tabbed in on the sides and then on the top. You come to the sides now for uh, hot rod mode and you angle these pieces out, bring it down angle this piece out, bring it down. They tab in and boom, there you go. A beautiful G1 hot rod that rolls fantastic. Um, this is highly accurate. It really is. It looks great. Uh, it's, it's hot rod. It is. As blocky and boxy as it is, it's still sleek. It is hot rod. Now, for Rodimus Prime Mode, we Open that up, bring it back up on the side, open that up and bring it back up on the side. This is how he will stay for Rodimus mode. We're going to get his the rest of his body in its proper configuration and then we're going to hopefully get this attached to that. Wish me luck. That's right, their arms and this is where we're going to begin. Why? Because this is relatively easy. You just need to take that piece and bring it down over. Take that piece and bring it down over. You have a slot and a tab here. You have a slot and a tab here. Can you guess what's going to happen? That's right. We put them together. And this will be a part that we will have to attach. Stick with me now. Okay, so now here's the main trailer part. <coughs> and again, Doing this isn't so bad either. We open that up. We
flip that forward, and we peg the legs together. Not so bad. We even take the heel spurs and we flip them in because guess what? This will stand just fine without them. Now that we have that done, we bring up this piece. So we, we flip the whole body down. The matrix is now facing down toward his feet. We put his hips like in a seated position. And then the very back here, we just lift it up again. No big deal so far, I don't think. Next, turn that yellow crest around. Bring this down the rest of the way. And then bring these pieces together. When you bring this down, you're going to want to make sure that you kind of push the hips up in the space that's created there. Snap these together and that's most of this done, thankfully. You already had the legs hopefully tabbed together, hopefully they stayed together. Now that you have the hips pushed up, and if you don't have these hips pushed up into that space, the rest of this is not going to work. So when you get this together, give it a push up just to make sure. Then you know that backwards bending knee? Now we use it. We have a rectangular tab here and one over here. They go into, let's see if I can even show this. Um, little slots you see right here painted orange painted orange well next to the painted orange there are little slots these pieces go into those little slots we bend the knees backwards until that goes down and tabs in beautiful then we take his feet and we have a rectangular tab here and here we have a hole in the top of each foot we bend that up and it goes on over rather smooth and on over rather smooth. By the way, if you're really inclined, you can put out his heel spurs and now he has like a ramp type of thing that he can use if that's something that you want to do. Okay, let's reposition things a little bit and bring in the other part of this because this is pretty much done at this point as much as we can have it done. I told you that this was going to be a bit of a challenge uh, in terms of doing a review on this guy. It, there's just so much going on and not everything works really smoothly. Um, remember, he's getting a 7.25. That's where we're currently at. Uh, so, now we're here and we have a couple of section stuck out here we need to get the arms down into those sections um, what can I say it's it's not the easiest thing in the world to do uh, get it down that did not want to work I thought before I do this I should show you exactly the orientation that the arms need to be in there are the hands together, there are the arms, and these little sections here will go into a space uh, that's in the uh, trailer. So laying that there, there's, um, I'm putting these back up, there's a little space way down in the bottom here. These, when they go in, will have this, this little piece down here go into that section. So these Come down if they'll stay together and there now we've got that in holy uh, there's again like with Optimus there's nothing to hold this up but you can flip those pieces out and that will hold it there naturally this is not perfect because this isn't really uh, the way that the trailer is intended to be so we're obviously missing something here we're missing uh, a front end. We're missing this guy. And here comes the hardest part, putting this onto this. It's easy to get it off. And everybody I have seen, every review I have seen, has been going from vehicle back. I'm going to do my best to show you going the way that you're going to first encounter it out of package. So, we fold these pieces back. And the idea is this. You have two little, um, like, red, 
tabs, rectangular tabs, right here. And they need to go into holes on the outside of each knee. They don't tab in there the tightest, trust me. Then we have a slot up top here. That should go on over right here. Again, not the tightest. These side panels are going to come up. When they come up, there's a little hole in them that should go on over a rectangular piece just above the rear wheel well. Then you're going to bring down these pieces and they're going to also tab on over a black section right here. And these uh, pipe pieces are going to go over a black tab right there. Hopefully, if all of that does not line up or work, then you have not done it correctly. I do find that this takes time, patience, and some pressure to hold him in position, you know, with the sections in the knees and up right here. A lot of times I stand him up. We're going to see how this goes and wish me the best. <laughs> Hint. It might also help if you have the pipes on the doors out. Now, let's reposition this to give me a lot of room to work here. I'm really nervous about this. Really nervous about this. Already I have those not wanting to cooperate. That's the other thing. These back pieces, while these need to go into the knees, these pieces don't necessarily want to stay tabbed uh, into the rear section like they did for hot rod mode that well when you're trying to exert pressure on it. Step one and two is done and you'll notice how I'm holding on to it here precariously. Step one and two is getting those pieces in and getting this tabbed in. That much is done. Next, we bring this up and hopefully the little slot here will go over this section here. So we bring it up on that side while still holding them in position and we bring it up on this side. Push it in, push it in. Okay, now you bring these sections back down. They should go on over the little black tab here as I indicated earlier. You may find that that is troublesome. Uh, you may have to adjust things a little bit. It does help, I find, if you bring these down and tab them on first. Tab that one on. You go over here, bring this one down. Probably gonna have to reach inside to do it. Tab that one on. Tab that one on. Tab that over. And I just lost it. I'm gonna get this guy together, you got the idea, and then we'll take a look at him in his final vehicle mode. And whew, after tabbing everything in, finally, here we have Rodimus Prime in his vehicle mode. This is where he shines, even with the paint mismatch between the front and the rest of the trailer. Uh, the stickers are okay. They're all right. They serve the purpose. Mine aren't really peeling too badly yet. We'll see what happens. He does roll like a champion. Um, it's hit or miss if you're going to get the front wheels down. You should but everything is such a pain to tab together with this guy and if one thing pops it all pops he's a nuisance to get together but he looks great once he's there um, if you have everything done right he's pretty solid the thing is if you don't have everything done just right he won't be solid at all the blasters will store up top here in a port and here in a Another port. He looks great. He was a 7.25. The transformation is not going to be fun for kids. They're not going to like this. They're going to have great difficulty 
mustering enough strength to get those arms off without breaking them, uh, they're going to find having the front of this into this virtually impossible. And many parents will find it virtually impossible because it's too much to line up and it's all so exact and none of it is exactly a nice, tight, snug fit or it's a little bit too tight. Um, the transformation of Hot Rod into his vehicle has the funny back end. It's not hard, but if you don't know what you're doing, I don't think it's intuitive for you to figure it out. There's a lot of ingenious engineering here. The concept is great. And I respect the efforts, but at the end of the day, it's not fantastic. The transformation is cumbersome and clunky. That's what I'd say. It's not that it's hard, it's clunky. And for that, I gotta give the transformation about a five. Overall, this guy, at best, is a six. Does that necessarily mean that he should only be despised? No, because I do like this mode. It is a nice sized Rodimus Prime. I don't want my faction leaders to be as big as a leader class. I like them Voyager size, just as my, my Megatron is and my Optimus and my version of Galvatron. This guy's robot serves that size class well. So kind of like with the original toy, I think I can live with taking the back off and maybe fan moding a battle platform. There's been a few of them kicking around and having the inner robot here that's supposed to be Hot Rod actually serve as my Rodimus Prime. And because I can live with that and because I think that that's kind of cool that we get a decent sized Rodimus Prime with his trailer, for that I personally, while I think the toy itself at best is a six, maybe a five, for me personally, because I have a use for it now, I'm going to say it's about an eight. I appreciate you sticking with me through how long this went and especially because it was a little bit all over the map and something kind of different. Whew. As always, let me know what you think of this guy. Maybe yours is fantastic and if it is, I am happy for you. As always, I want to thank you for giving me some of your very valuable time and I look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit right here inside the video.